Hello, my name's Phil Holden and I'm um, going to try and help you with your economics through a series of videos that take you right through the AS level economics or indeed the first year of A level economics. I'm going to be putting up 50 videos, this is the first one, um, 50 videos, two videos every week for 25 weeks, uh, trying to um, align the release of the videos with what I think you will be studying at that time in school or college. So you can treat these videos as uh, a regular two videos a week backup to your, to your school or college um, studies and hopefully it will help you perform uh, better at school, at college and also will help get you that grade uh, that you want. Let's start with our first video and uh, let's uh, establish precisely what is economics as a subject. Economics is the study of how we try to resolve the basic economic problem. We means individuals, societies, households, countries, the whole world. How we try and resolve the basic economic problem, which is this. Limited factors of production, but unlimited wants and needs exist in the world. So we have to make choices. We want an unlimited amount of, of goods and services, and yet we only have limited or finite quantities of land, labour and capital. And that creates a problem. We cannot have everything we want because we don't have enough resources to make all the things that we want. Hence, the basic economic problem. The basic economic problem is limited factors of production. Factors of production are land, labour and capital, but unlimited wants and needs. This creates a need to make choices. We need to allocate at these limited factors of production into their best uses so that we can satisfy the greatest amount and the most important of our needs and wants. Now mostly this is done by a thing called the market mechanism, the interaction of consumers who show what they want to buy and producers or entrepreneurs who put together some quantities of land, labour and capital to produce what they think will sell. This price mechanism, uh, the demand and the supply, the market forces, whatever you call it, is at the heart of economics and we'll be studying lots of that. But sometimes government steps in and says we override this market mechanism and we instead decide how to allocate the sum of the land, sum of the labour and sum of the capital. And you, almost certainly, unless you're watching this from North Korea, you are living in a, in a, in a country where some of the resources get allocated by government and some of the resources get allocated by the market mechanism. If you are living in North Korea, um, you know, my sympathies and uh, uh, you're living in a society where everything gets allocated by the government. So uh, you can only um, imagine what it's like for us living in mixed economies. Anyway, more of that in a later video. Um, the last thing I want to cover in this introductory video is the concept of positive and normative statements. You see, in economics, we're only interested in facts. And, and that means we're only interested in positive statements. A positive statement is a statement that can be proved right or wrong through the use of economic data. It might be incorrect, but if we can show it's incorrect, or indeed show it's correct, that makes it a positive statement. Normative statements simply express value judgments or opinions and can be debated but can never be proved right or wrong. Let me give you some examples. Take a look at this statement. Unemployment in the UK is 52%. Now, you can probably guess that this is an incorrect statement. Unemployment is not 52% in the UK. But it is a positive statement. It is possible to go out and prove the veracity or not, the truth or not, of the statement here. We can go out, we can collect the data that will reveal whether this statement is true or not. That makes it a positive statement. Irrespective of whether it's right or wrong, we can show that it's right or wrong, therefore it's a positive statement. 
That's a positive statement. What about the next one? Unemployment in the UK is too high. I'm giving you a moment to think. A moment has passed and I can tell you that this is a normative statement. This phrase, is too high, is definitely uh, revealing that this is a normative statement. It's the opinion of the author of the, the statement. Other people might disagree. They say, no, it's not too high, it's too low, or it's just right. Um, it can be debated, but we cannot come to a final conclusion about whether the statement is correct or incorrect. And that's a normative statement. And we don't want normative statements. I mean, it's nice to discuss things and have an opinion, but economics is complex enough, we don't need normative statements getting in the way and making things even tougher. We only deal in positive statements in economics. Let me give you another example. The national minimum wage is too low and should be raised. I hope you can see that this is a normative statement and should be raised, is too low. These phrases clearly show that it's expressing a judgment of the author of the statement. We cannot prove it's too low. We cannot, we cannot prove that it should be raised. It's just an opinion. You know, sometimes this word should is, uh, the, you know, the evidence that the, the, the statement is expressing a desire of the author and it makes it normative. I've got one last example for you though, and it's a tricky one, so read it carefully. Should the minimum wage be lowered, unemployment would be likely to fall. Now you might have latched on to this word should, should the minimum, but in fact, of course, uh, you could see, I hope, that the use of the word should in this example is a different meaning um, to the previous sentence where they said it should be lowered. Uh, and, and this is a conditional use of the word should. Uh, I don't want to turn this into an English lesson, but it's a conditional use of the word should. And this is, in fact, a positive statement. We can show through economic data that when national minimum wages get lowered, unemployment falls. Now we haven't studied demand and supply in labour markets yet, but even so, I could take data from countries that have lowered their minimum wage and I can correlate falls in unemployment with falls, with preceding falls in minimum wage and, and show, demonstrate, prove to you that it's likely it would happen. It's likely unemployment would fall when minimum wage falls. And so this is a positive statement. So be, I wrote this one because it's a tricky one, and also I wanted to show you that the word should does not, or in, in a sentence, does not mean it must be a normative statement. It can be positive. Okay? Anyway, there ends our first lesson, our fir the first video. I hope you liked it, and I hope you'll be looking out for video two, three, four, all the way up to 50, uh, and, uh, and let me know how, they, how useful they've been for you. Um, okay, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll, um, I'll see you again in another video soon.